Hello, Chosen family. We are back, and with Christmas approaching, I had Brienne come over, and we are going to be reviewing another episode of The Chosen, mm -hmm. but we're not actually reviewing an episode from Season 1. We are actually going to be reviewing the pilot episode of The Chosen, which is called The Shepherd, which was actually released well before The Chosen came out. Mm -hmm. The director, Dallas Jenkins, he created this episode, which is only like 19 minutes long. Right. He created it for his church, and that was actually this video that went viral mm -hmm. and ultimately led to The Chosen being created. Mm -hmm. And since it's focused on Christmas, I thought it would be good for us to, you know, maybe just celebrate Christmas by breaking down this video. Uh, we've actually already filmed, me and Brienne, we broke down episode two. We haven't released that video yet. That's coming soon. But uh, since Christmas is running coming around, I was like, you know what? We gotta, we gotta break down this one. Before we actually get to that, we have to light things up a little bit. And with it being Christmas, what color do you think we should do? Like we got green, mm -hmm. we got red, we got blue. Mm -hmm. We got any of them. What color do you think? I think probably green, because our green? hats are red. Okay. We have green in the background. Okay, cool. Yes. All right. Well, which, which green? green? That green or that green? Very subtle difference. You see that? Oh, yeah. The first one. The that first one right there? Yeah. All right. Okay, cool. Green, yeah. Red and green. Merry Christmas, everybody. <laughs> okay, so before we actually break down the episode, what did you think about it? I really liked it. Mm -hmm. um, you were talking about how they didn't have like a huge budget mm -hmm. for it compared to the actual episodes, but I thought like it was filmed really nice. Mm -hmm. um, I liked it. It was just kind of like... Short and sweet. It was just like a nice little film. Good for Christmas time. I really liked it. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's probably why they trusted Dallas Jenkins to mm -hmm. go on to direct The Chosen and stuff. Because they're like, oh, wow. If he could do that with That's a limited a budget, budget. Yeah. imagine what he could do if he had a bigger budget. Right. And so basically, I actually watched all that. I, I bought the special edition Blu-ray set that they mm -hmm. created of season one. Uh, I bought the first four episodes whenever they released them. And then I bought the full season whenever they released it. And then when I bought the Blu-ray special edition. So I've got like three different copies of the show. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but I watched like some of the special features. And they were talking about how all this came to be. And it's actually a really cool story. So if you get a chance to watch that, go watch it. It's really cool how it came about. And yeah. you can see how somebody would watch this and be like, oh, yeah. This is a really neat concept. Mm -hmm. I'd love to see a multi-season thing about right. this. But let's uh, let's break down the episode. So the episode opens up, and we have we're immediately introduced to the shepherd, who is basically just you know he's limping, mm -hmm. right? And he's limping. And he's got this little lamb in front mm -hmm. of him, and we see that he is limping behind a group of other shepherds who are well ahead. They're uh, you know they're healthy shepherds. They're yes. you know they're just regular guys, and he's behind. He's obviously the outcast mm -hmm. following. And we have a few little scenes that pop up where you know it's kind of just laying the groundwork for what's going on. Right. And the first thing we read is that this is based on the true story from Luke's Gospel, chapter 2. Yes. Uh, and so, that being said, I figured we would just start by reading that story. And so, I'm going to pull up Luke, chapter 2, and you get to do the reading. I get yeah, to do the reading. you get to do the reading. This is a story, like, since it's Christmas time, you're probably going to hear this read at multiple times throughout these weeks. But, you know what? We're going to read it for you, too. So, buckle up. Here we go. And in the same region, there were the shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock at night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with great fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy, and will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was the angel, a multitude of the heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those whom he is pleased. When the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste, and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. And when they saw it, they made known the saying that had been told to them concerning this child. And all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured up all these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had seen, as it had been told them. So that's the story that we're basically covering in this little 19 minute video. And so it's not the entire Christmas story. You know, there, there's other movies where they've had like the whole nativity story and right. stuff like that. Uh, but this is a very condensed part. It's specifically mm -hmm. about one shepherd, right? I mean, it's really about all the shepherds, but one shepherd in particular, uh, we learned that his name is Simon. And we're just following him and he is one of the first people to get to behold 
the infant Jesus. And it's mm-hmm. a really, really cool little yeah. uh, story. I like yeah. what he did with that. What did you think about uh, Simon's character? Yeah, um, I thought it was kind of cool that the main focus wasn't on, like, Mary and Joseph. Mm-hmm. That it was, like, from the perspective of a shepherd. Especially because he was kind of, like, the weak link mm-hmm. of the group. I thought that was, like, a really interesting concept that we were able to see it from his perspective versus maybe Mary and Joseph or someone who's maybe a more important role, I guess you would say. So Yeah, and I, I enjoyed that they went out of their way to give him the characteristics, like the, mm-hmm. to flesh out the character. So he wasn't just like a random, just like right. shepherd. Yeah. They made him to where he was, you know, you already kind of empathized with him. Mm-hmm. And so you got to be excited later on when, spoiler alert, he's like running and he's like throwing his cane down and stuff. You're like, oh, this is exciting. Yes. Even if I was thinking about, if somebody asked me to make a, video about the shepherds Mm -hmm. i don't know if i would go out of my way to think oh it's going to focus on one shepherd and i'm going to give him some character i'd probably be like there's a group of shepherds and like i would literally just like take the scripture and just play it out (laughs) whereas i like what he did there to where it's not contradicting scripture or anything right yeah Uh, that's one thing that i've tried to like whenever we talk through these episodes and stuff Mm -hmm. like that i try to point out uh, if there's ever any contradiction in scripture and so far there really hasn't been yeah Uh, like he might change details or anything but nothing that's crucial like theologically or anything uh, and so he just kind of, you know, he, he gives us the character of this guy named Simon, which I really like. Yeah. Um, but so it starts off with telling us that this is based off the true story of Luke chapter 2. Mm-hmm. So Simon's story is not found in Luke chapter 2, but the story that encapsulates the whole episode. You know, the idea that yes. these the angels appear to the shepherd and they got to go behold the infant Jesus. Mm-hmm. That is the true story. Yes. And then it says, when Augustus Caesar became the emperor of Rome, the prophets of Israel had been silent for 400 years. Mm-hmm. Right, so what it's doing is it's establishing for us basically the context of the episode, which is really cool because if you've ever been to a Bible study with me, mm-hmm. uh, I always say, "What's the first question we have to ask whenever we study Scripture?" And that question is, what is "What's the, the context? context?" Right, and yeah. and so he's doing that for us. He's letting us know, okay, this is when Augustus was emperor, and at this point, four hundred years have passed since the prophets have spoken. Right, and so just right there, he's laying the groundwork, and he's saying these people have been studying the words of the prophets. Mm-hmm. And we're going to see that throughout the episode. We're going to have a lot of quotes from Isaiah and then some quotes from Micah. Basically, the people of Israel, they're hungering for like what God's going to do next. And whenever you're reading the Old Testament, you see that God made these promises that there's going to be this coming figure. And then when the Old Testament ends, that figure hasn't arrived. And so it's really interesting. Like Even for Jews today, the Old Testament is their Bible. And basically, their Bible is a mystery because it ends on a cliffhanger. Yeah. You're like, wait. Like, Malachi literally ends, the, the final book, it ends saying, okay, the prophet Elijah is going to show up and pave the way for the Lord. Mm-hmm. And then it just ends. Mm-hmm. And you're like, what? When, when is this happening? Mm-hmm. And so even to this day, they're still waiting on Elijah. Right. Well, when the New Testament starts off, we see John the Baptist. And he's paving the way for Jesus. And it's, so it's really cool. The Old Testament ends, it's like a big cliffhanger. Uh, and that's what he's establishing here, right? So Augustus Caesar is the emperor, and the prophets have been silent for 400 years. And during those 400 years, the people of Israel have been waiting. And that's actually the next thing we read, right? Mm -hmm. So suffering heavy taxation, the Hebrew people prayed for relief from the Roman occupation and priests repeatedly read the old prophecies aloud in synagogues. Mm -hmm. And so once again, he's fleshing out just the context of this. Uh, It's actually during these 400 years that synagogues become a thing. Mm-hmm. Um, so in the Old Testament, basically, we don't have the idea of synagogues. People would get together and study scripture and stuff. But uh, in between the Old and New Testaments, there's these 400 years where people start gathering together. And I believe the word synagogue literally means to gather. It, it's a gathering place. And basically, it was like church, right? So the people of Israel, they'd get together uh, usually on one day a week, sometimes multiple times a week. Mm-hmm. And they would get together and they would read from the scriptures and they would meditate on it, kind of like how we do in churches. Right. And they'd get together and they would say, okay, how do we apply this in our lives? What promises is God making? And what is God going to do in the future? And nowadays we kind of do that. You know, we read books like Revelation or like Daniel or something. And we're thinking, what's God going to do in the future? Or we're thinking like the end times, like the end of the world. Mm-hmm. Well, for the Jews, they were thinking, God promised this king. When is this king going to show up? Mm-hmm. And so for 400 years, they're meeting in their synagogues. They're suffering under Roman rule. There's heavy taxation. Things are getting miserable. Even before the Romans showed up, there's other empires and different kingdoms like trying to take over Israel And a lot of stuff is going on between the Old and New Testament. We just flipped from Malachi to Matthew, and we're just like, okay, next story. Yes. For them, that was 400 years of a lot of stuff. Right. Uh, And these people are just clinging to this hope that one day God's going to send this king. The reason I'm spending more time on this is that I like that he's laying the context for that. Because it really does 
inform the episode. And really, the more you know about the context makes the episode that more important Mm -hmm. because it really makes all the emotional moments hit really well. Mm -hmm. And then finally, the last thing that it says before actually getting to the actual story is it says that the prophecies whispered of a coming Messiah who would save God's people. Uh, And so that's basically just the condensed version of what you need to know. Whenever you go read the Old Testament, when you read the prophets especially, that's actually where in my daily Bible reading, I've been in the prophets for a while. I read like a chapter a day. And so you're in there for a big chunk. Mm -hmm. And the prophecies are about different things, but chiefly, um, their main focus is that God is going to one day provide this kingdom for Israel. And there's going to be this king who is going to reign in righteousness and justice. And he's going to come and he's going to deliver the people. Uh, And so over these 400 years, people have been debating, how's this Messiah going to show up? And we're going to see some of that debate over the course of the episode. It's only 19 minutes long, but they packed a whole lot of information in here. Um, So really, this video is going to be longer than the episode. I can tell you that right now. We're already pretty good into it. You just need to know... They were thinking about this Messiah. Who is he going to be? What's he going to be like? Is he going to be this conquering king? Who is he going to be? And we're about to see. Because then we cut to the shepherd once again. Mm -hmm. And now he's going with the other shepherds and they stop at a well and they get some water. Mm -hmm. Right? And then after they get some water, they turn and we see where they're heading. There's a sign Mm -hmm. and it says Bethlehem. Yes. What are you thinking at this point? Where do you think the story was heading? Well, I knew that it was based off Luke chapter 2. Yeah. I knew where I was heading, but I didn't know. I didn't know that he was about to go um, and give a lamb like for sacrifice. Like, I didn't yeah. know that that was going to happen. Mm-hmm. So I knew like the idea of what the entire episode was, but I wasn't sure. Like, okay, like all the shepherds, they're going to Bethlehem, but like, what are they going to mm-hmm. do there? Why are they all? Why do they all have their lambs with them? Like, mm-hmm. um, yeah, I didn't know where that was going. Yeah, and so they end up getting to Bethlehem, and whenever they get there. Uh, the first thing you do is you actually hear a man in a synagogue, mm. right? I don't know if he's a rabbi or not, but he is at least just somebody in there. And he's reading from a prophet named Micah, mm. and Micah chapter 5 specifically. And he's reading a condensed version of this, but I'm going to read the full passage here. But you, O Bethlehem Ephrathah, who are too little to be among the clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me one who is to be ruler in Israel, whose coming forth is from of old, from ancient days. Therefore he shall give them up until the time when she who is in labor has given birth. Then the rest of his brothers shall return to the people of Israel. And he shall stand and shepherd his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. And they shall dwell secure. For now he shall be great to the ends of the earth. And he shall be their peace. So right there, the first passage that we're introduced to whenever we're talking about these Old Testament scriptures, it's from the prophet Micah. And it's very fitting that they're reading this passage in Bethlehem because the prophecy is about Bethlehem. And it's saying, oh, you, Bethlehem Ephrathah, which is the Bethlehem that they're in at this moment. By and large, people realize that this was saying the Messiah is going to be born in Bethlehem, the city of David, Mm because when you're in the Old Testament, King David was from Bethlehem. And so David's descendant of the Messiah, he'd be born in Bethlehem as well. And that would be a sign to confirm it. Well, they're in Bethlehem, and so around this time, you're just getting to sense the idea that they're really longing for this Messiah. They're gathered in the synagogue, and what are they reading? Hey, guys, from this town will come the future king who's going to reign not only over Israel, but over all the earth. So you're like, ooh, this is good stuff. It's a build-up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and so then we cut back to the shepherd, mm-hmm. and now uh, he's taking the sheep to a rabbi who is inspecting the lambs, mm-hmm. and the shepherd actually comes up to the rabbi, and he says, teacher, um, I was wondering if you could tell me about the Messiah. What's he going to be like? Mm-hmm. Uh, and the rabbi, he's kind of a jerk, honestly. Yeah. Uh, he's kind of mean. Uh, he's basically um, this is the personification of how a lot of people view the Pharisees in the scriptures. <laughs> uh, they did kind of make him just like a very one-dimensional like jerk. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Uh, which, like I said, in a 19-minute episode, you don't expect them to flesh out every single character. Uh, But the rabbi, he's kind of a jerk. Mm -hmm. And he's inspecting the lambs, and the guy asks him, what's the Messiah going to be like? Mm -hmm. And he says he's going to be a very good military leader. Mm -hmm. And so we're getting to see, this is what they view the Messiah as going to be, right? He's Mm -hmm. he's not going to be exactly what Jesus shows up and is. He's going to be a military leader who's going to conquer Rome. He's going to get him out of there. Uh, But then the shepherd's confused. Because he says, uh, you know what, I was actually, I, I was talking to this priest, and the priest actually was saying something different. Uh, he's about to explain what that priest was saying, but then he gets cut off because the rabbi rebukes him because he has not brought forth a spotless lamb. What did you think about the whole spotless lamb plot line here? Where did you think that was leading? I wasn't really sure how it was, um, like what it was going to lead to in that moment. Um, I knew that he was kind of like the weak link, and I was like, he seems like he's struggling a little bit, so I could see... Um, like why his lamb like wasn't spotless and everything mm-hmm. like that, but I didn't really know what the reason for it mm-hmm. was. I could see how 
whenever you're watching it, you might just be thinking, this is just showing this guy's having a rough day. Right, <laughs> you know? yeah. Especially because yeah. afterwards, like, after, you know, he rebukes and everything, he, like, walks away, he, like, trips and falls, and, like, yeah. it's just like, okay, this is, like, he's really struggling. Yeah. <laughs> he's limping at the beginning. They reject the sheep. Now yeah. he's fallen. His arm's all cut up. Basically, we're showing this guy, he's just, nobody's being nice to him. Mm-hmm. Everybody's a jerk. Mm-hmm. And uh, what we're going to see is that he's actually a really nice guy. Yeah. You know, uh, even though we, people are being jerks to him, he's just like, he's interested. Like, he's just focused on God, which is really cool. You see his curiosity. He's saying, who mm-hmm. is the Messiah? Like, I don't want to just accept whatever answer. Like, I want to know what scripture says. Like, you're mm-hmm. saying he's a military leader, but this other priest said this. Like, where are you coming up with this? And like I said, the rabbi rebukes him. And he says, how dare you bring this lamb before me? These are for the righteous of the righteous. They need the most spotless lambs. Don't you dare come back here mm-hmm. unless you have a spotless lamb. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then another shepherd apologizes. And then the rabbi, he, like I said, really a big jerk. Yeah. Uh, he turns to the shepherd, uh, to Simon, and he says, You wonder why the Messiah has not come? People like you keeping him away with your stains. I was mm-hmm. like, dang, man, that was harsh. Like, yeah. that wasn't called for. You didn't need to go there, but you mm-hmm. did. Like, he was just being mean for the sake of being mean. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I don't want you to be my religious leader. Mm-hmm. You're you're a jerk. Yeah. <laughs> um, but then, uh, as Simon's turning away, this is when he trips and he cuts mm-hmm. his arm. And, like, you were talking about, like, this guy, he's just having a bad day. Mm-hmm. He's like, oh, man. Uh, he cuts his arm. He's like, dang, this is really a bummer. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, as he's getting up and he's wiping off his arm, mm-hmm. he overhears... A guy in the synagogue once again, mm-hmm. but now the guy's reading from the book of Isaiah. And he's mm-hmm. reading from Isaiah chapter 9, which I am pulling up right now. <laughs> Sorry, I'm having to go back and forth. Uh, so in Isaiah chapter 9, we read this. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in a land of deep darkness, on them has light shone. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as they are glad when they divide the spoil for the yoke of his burden. And the staff of his shoulder, the rod of his oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. And this is a prophecy from the prophet Isaiah to specifically the land of Galilee, right? So this is actually something that will be more so fulfilled whenever Jesus grows up and he moves back to Galilee, which is up in northern Israel, because right now they're in southern Israel, which is Judea. Um, But whenever he goes up to Galilee, this is going to be the whole the people in darkness have seen a great light. Mm -hmm. Because these people who are dwelling in obscurity and darkness, who are dwelling in sin... Well, now the son of righteousness has shown up. Mm -hmm. And so once again, it's a prophecy about the Messiah. It's the idea that the Messiah is showing up and he's just changing everything. Throughout all the Gospels, there's this very big imagery of Jesus being the light and everything else being the darkness. Mm -hmm. Uh, And so we have that being read in the synagogues. And Simon wanders over because once again, he's curious. And he walks in there and he's listening, right? He's just listening, but his blood is dripping on the ground and so a guy comes up to him and he rushes him off and he's like get out of here like you you're just like you're dirtying the place up Mm -hmm. what did you think about that scene um okay initially i was kind of confused as to like why they would include his blood dripping on the ground i was like Mm -hmm. okay like we know he scraped his arm and everything and then i thought about what the rabbi told him earlier about him talking about um how dare you come here with your stains, mm-hmm. right? And blood is kind of known to, like, stain the floor. And then I thought about how um, the stains kind of represents, like, our sins. Mm-hmm. And how it's kind of ironic that the rabbi earlier said, you know, the reason that, that Jesus isn't coming is because um, of the, the stains mm-hmm. you're giving. But actually, he's coming here to take away our sins. Yeah. So, yeah, that's just kind of, like, all connected. And I was yeah. like, whoa! Which the blood didn't actually stain the floor, but... Yeah, <laughs> you made that a, was com- a weird yeah. part. <laughs> you made a comment about that. Whenever the guy like wipes away the blood, it just wipes away very quickly. You could tell that, that they didn't use actual not blood. Not, yeah. <laughs> um, but just watching that scene, maybe just thinking from like a ministerial perspective, I saw mm-hmm. a lot of application for our own lives because mm-hmm. the irony here is that this guy who has blood dripping from him, he is the one person who is genuinely seeking God, and you can just like see in how he's acting that he is probably the most faithful person we encounter, right? Mm-hmm. He's just, like, curious and just wants to know, like, about God. And mm-hmm. whenever he finally is going to meet Jesus and stuff, like, he's just, like, the most humbled by it. Whereas everybody else, like, the religious leaders, they're being rude to him. Yeah. Uh, and they're looking down upon him as if he is worse than them. Mm-hmm. When really, when it comes to a spiritual state, it seems like he's kind of doing better, mm-hmm. right? So he shows up, and they rush him out, and they say, you have no business here because he's bleeding. Mm-hmm. But really, it's like, where's their compassion? Where's their love? Where's their grace, right? right. They're, they're in there being like, oh, like, I, I think the application for nowadays is that a lot of the times we focus so much on appearance and not as enough on people's heart, yes. right? And, so, and sometimes people do go to the opposite extreme. Sometimes people just say, oh, you, you don't know my heart, man. And they use that to justify very unholy things. I'm not 
advocating that at all. Uh, I'm just saying that a lot of the times we can become legalistic and self-righteous uh, in a way that causes us to look down on people uh, who maybe might not, you know, have the opportunity to have something better. Mm-hmm. Uh, you had to hear me gripe about this. There recently, we were I was at my church sitting at a pew, and I saw this family in front of us, uh, and it was this woman and her children. She had like five kids. They were all like under the age of 10. Mm-hmm. And you could tell that they didn't have a whole lot of money. And I, as far as I could tell, she was either a single mother or the husband just didn't come with or something. And you could just tell they didn't have a whole lot of money, right? The kids, they were cold. And instead of being wrapped in blankets, they were wrapped in like towels, like mm-hmm. like, like shower, bath like bath towels. Yeah. yeah. And they were wrapped in towels and stuff. And she had a baby. And once again, all these kids are like under 10 years old, right? So this one woman with all these kids under 10 and she's got a baby and the baby was making noises and stuff not super loud but i saw this and you know i was like trying to make faces at the baby like mm-hmm. just to try to calm it down um but i guess some people got distracted uh and so we actually had a guy who works for the church uh, he actually came up and he whispered something in the woman's ear and then the woman got up and she left uh, and she had to take all the kids with her and, and that just crushed me i don't know what he said to her and i don't know the full story there but just from an outsider looking in it looked like this one woman she got all of her kids up early in the morning to bring them to church. But because they were being a slight disruption, we asked them to leave. And that, like, crushed me because I was like, oh, like, who are we to do that? Yeah. You know, I mean, this woman, she's trying her best here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then us, like, it was almost like a very entitled and self-righteous thing. We're like, oh, I can't focus on the sermon. I was like, well, you know what? Maybe you just need to not be so distracted. Like, <laughs> mm-hmm. focus on the sermon and not on this, like, person. You know, like, it, it really crushed me. Because I was like, this woman, like, she's trying her best. She got all her kids here early in the morning. She's just trying her best to get all this stuff together. And we just, like, asked her to leave. Mm-hmm. That crushed me. And, and that's really that's what I kind of, my mind went to when I saw this. Because I think we do that a lot of times. We get so focused on ourselves. And in our attempts to live holy lives, mm-hmm. sometimes we can actually be very ungracious to those people who might just be having a rough time, right? Like this guy, he didn't like, he wasn't bleeding and stuff because he was sinful. <laughs> he was bleeding because he tripped. And then right. you're kicking him out as if like that made him unholy. It's like, guys, he, he just, he tripped. Mm-hmm. He, he just wants to know about the Messiah. And mm-hmm. and so just watching that kind of like made me sad. I was like, oh, like there's more application there that I could go into. But for the sake of the video, I feel like we should probably move on because I rambled on enough. That being said, they move on. And so as the man leaves there, Right, he's just been rejected by the synagogue, but he comes across this couple. Right, uh, this man is walking with his, uh, you know, his wife sitting on a donkey and stuff. And the man comes up to the shepherd and he says, "Hey, uh, where's the local well? Uh, my wife, she's like super thirsty. She's with child and she just needs something to drink." And Simon responds, and he says, "Oh, the wells, you know, it's down that way." Did you immediately know who this couple was? Yes. Okay, you did? Okay, yes. I wasn't sure. Uh, so this is Joseph and Mary, right? I mean, you don't have it explicitly said there. Simon tells them, he says, hey, um, the, the well's down there, but you know what? I actually just got some water. And so he takes out mm-hmm. his little water jug and he gives it to him. And Mary, she like downs that thing. She's like, yeah. <laughs> she just drinks it. <laughs> and um, Joseph, she's very appreciative. And he says, thank you, thank you, thank you. You're so kind. And then the shepherd says, where are y'all from? And the guy says, we're from Nazareth. And he said, and Simon says, oh, don't, don't say that too loud. Uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what people say. They say that nothing good comes from Nazareth. Yeah. Uh, and Joseph says, yeah, I know. We got a bad reputation and stuff. Uh-huh. Um, and then Simon goes to introduce himself. And he says, oh, by the way, my name is Simon. And then Joseph is about to introduce himself. Cool. Uh, you know, very good direction here, right? It's like mm-hmm. a little tease. You know he's about to say, hi, I'm Joseph. Uh-huh. But then a Pharisee comes in and says, out of my way. And then they have to part ways. And Joseph's like, okay, well, we got to go. And so uh-huh. they kind of go their separate directions. And then uh, as the shepherd is walking back, as Simon is going back to, you know, the fields, um, the sun is beginning to set. And we have Isaiah 35 being read. Strengthen the weak hands. And make firm the feeble knees. Say to those who have an anxious heart, Be strong, fear not. Behold, your God will come with vengeance. With the recompense of God, he will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened, and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then shall the lame man leap like a deer, and the tongue of the mute sing for joy. For waters break forth in the wilderness, and streams in the desert. The burning sand shall become a pool, and the thirsty ground springs of water. In the haunt of jackals, where they lie down, the grass shall become reeds and rushes. Right? We didn't read that whole passage in the actual episode. I just like to read a little bit more so you get a little more context there. Um, But that's a very significant passage, um, especially when it comes to Simon's story. Mm -hmm. Uh, Because this is another prophecy about whenever the Messiah shows up. And when he shows up, miracles are going to begin to happen. Mm -hmm. You know, it says that he will strengthen the feeble knees. Mm -hmm. Right? It says that the lame will leap for joy. Well, what we're about to see 
is that Simon's knees are going to be strengthened, mm -hmm. and he's going to be leaping for joy. Absolutely. Uh, so really cool, like just a little, little groundwork being laid here. I really liked, uh, and you'll know this because you know me better than anybody watching this video probably does, <laughs> um, you know how much I like the Old Testament yes. and how much I appreciate it. Uh, like I said, I've been reading through it, uh, the Bible a chapter a day, and being in the prophets, I'm currently in Zechariah. I uh, have like less than two weeks left in the Old Testament, and it feels kind of sad because I feel like I'm about to say goodbye Your to judgment. an old... Yeah, I'm about to say goodbye to a friend I've been with for a few years <laughs> in order to go to the New Testament. Uh, but reading through the Old Testament, you realize how crucial it is in order to understand the New Testament. And so I really appreciated how this episode constantly called back there because so often mm -hmm. in sermons nowadays and in our churches, we don't really talk about the Old Testament that much. Mm -hmm. uh, so I really like how it really was utilizing that and showing how in order to understand who Jesus is, you need to understand the Old Testament. We cut to the shepherds. Um, now, now the rest of his friends, they're all sitting around a campfire. They're joking around about the Romans and the Pharisees, just like, mm -hmm. you know, having a little small talk, as you would imagine shepherds probably were doing. Mm -hmm. uh, and as they're just talking forth back and, you know, whatnot, uh, Simon walks up and they say, oh, he's finally arrived. And then they're kind of jerks to him. Uh, yeah. They're saying, oh, I don't know why y'all allowed him to be here. And they mm -hmm. say, you know, you don't get to eat with us. You get to go sleep with the sheep tonight. Mm -hmm. uh, and they're kind of really being mean to him. And once yeah. again, you're like, ah, oh, this guy's so bad for him. Yeah, he's such a nice guy. But they're just just being mean. Yeah. Because like, you see him only trying to do good, good things. You know? Yeah. He's trying to seek the word of God. He's trying to learn more. He's, you know, trying his best with his with his sheep um, and helping Mary out, you know, like immediately giving his water away. And you're just mm. like, man, Aww. every time he does something, yeah. it just goes the opposite way. Yeah. Uh, and so then we cut to Simon once again. And, you know, he's kind of walking away dejected. And mm -hmm. he walks down a little hill. He finds a little creek. And he hunches over. Uh, he, he sticks his little uh, torch. I guess It's like a staff, but like yeah. a torch. Mm -hmm. He, like, sticks it in the ground. Uh, and he hunches over. And he starts, like, you know, bends over to the creek to wash off his, you know, bloody arm. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, all of a sudden, when he stands up, mm -hmm. the wind begins to pick up. And all of a sudden, the fire... Too. Yeah, the fire goes out, and it's like, whoa, what's happening? Uh -huh. And then the fire in the whole camp goes out, mm -hmm. and then a bright light appears, and you're like, mm -hmm. and you're like whoa, <laughs> this is crazy. <laughs> what is this? Yeah, and even the other shepherds are like, what's going on? Uh -huh. And all of them, like, they just, like, fall on their face. They're like, oh, this is amazing, and they, like, just lay down, and they're, like, bowing down to the ground, mm -hmm. and Simon's just, like, standing in awe, like, what's happening? Mm -hmm. And then, I thought this was interesting, I want to get your opinion on it, the lights just cut off, mm -hmm. And they start running. Mm -hmm. So they don't actually show, like, whenever Brienne read the passage earlier, you know, we right. know that what happens is that these angels show up and they're saying, guys, a savior has been born in Bethlehem. He is Christ the Lord. And then, like, the, a whole chorus of angels start to show up and they start singing. And they're saying, glory to be to God in the highest, you know. Yeah. All that stuff. Um, that, that's Latin, but whatever. <laughs> uh, so they, we know that in the story, they sing all that stuff. But for the show, they didn't include that, right? Mm -hmm. They just had the bright light, and then it goes off. What did you think about that choice to not actually include the angels speaking? Mm -hmm. I thought it was actually kind of cool. But I think it's because of the way they set up the rest of the episode. A lot of times, like, whenever um, Simon and Joseph were meeting, you know, they cut them off there. Whenever mm -hmm. he was with a the rabbi, they cut them off there. So mm -hmm. it was these numerous times throughout the whole setup of the show where it was like the suspense is building up and then they cut it off yeah and the suspense is building up and they cut it off so now you're at this point and if you've read that chapter of mm -hmm. luke then you know you know what the idea of it is and so everyone knows what the light is and mm -hmm. they understand what's happening but i think the way they set it up it fit really well mm -hmm. because you're like oh my gosh this is crazy what is this bright light and we all know what it is but then they don't say anything and you just see them all rushing so now mm -hmm. the suspense is like at this all-time high and even though you know where it's going you're like oh my gosh i can't wait to see mm -hmm. and i think it also kind of allows you to kind of feel what those shepherds were mm -hmm. feeling in that moment because they were like in such shock you're mm -hmm. able to kind of have that suspense with them and like that excitement of like, oh my gosh, we're going to see the Messiah. Mm -hmm. And like you mentioned there, if you're familiar with the passage, you know what's being said. Mm -hmm. And I don't know why they chose to not include the angels speaking, mm -hmm. but almost from like, from my perspective, like what I'm thinking here is when I'm watching it, Mm -hmm. I'm almost reciting the words in my head mm -hmm. because I'm waiting for them to be said. I'm like, oh, how are they going to present it? What, like, when are they going to say it? And then they don't. That almost actually, like, enhances it. Yeah. Because rather than them just saying it, because sometimes whenever you hear things, you kind of just, like, 
you're like, oh, I've heard this before, and you kind of tune it out. Right. But by not having it said, rather than just letting you tune it out, the direction is actually causing you to recite the passage in your heart. You're like actually and you're, engaging. And, yeah, and you're getting excited because you're waiting for it, and then it never comes. And you're like, oh, but this is such an exciting message. Why didn't you say it? Yeah. But then you're now just as excited as the shepherd. It's almost like if they had included the words, it would have taken away from it. I don't know right. if that's true or not. I'd have yeah. to see it if they included it. Mm-hmm. But by not including the language it's actually causing us to step into the story Mm -hmm. because we're actually being like we know that message like we know what they heard you're hearing them sing even without them actually being there you know Mm -hmm. and you're like ooh, and so now you're caught up and you're actually as excited uh, with the shepherds i like that little creative choice they did there to where it was almost like like you could tell like on the looks of their faces Mm -hmm. that they heard something because as soon as the lights go out they look at each other they smile Mm -hmm. and they just start running right so even like without hearing what the angel's message was Mm -hmm. you know you're like oh they know the messiah was just born Mm -hmm. and like their their faces just drastically change and they just start running and simon is at like the front of the pack Mm -hmm. right he's like he just takes off he's moving (laughs) yeah and like he's limping at first and it kind of reminded me of Forrest Gump a little bit. Oh my gosh, yes. <laughs> yeah. yes. Oh, because he's kind of limping at first. Uh, and then, like, as he's going, it's just like, poof, and, like, he's just, like, he's getting better and better. And then all of a sudden, he just, like, throws his stain. staff. Yeah, he just, like, <laughs> throws it to the ground. And he's just hauling. He's like, poof, 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 poof. <laughs> he's just going. And he immediately, like, they're, like, beelining straight to the stable. And as they're running, Simon, he's, like, you know, he's throwing his staff to the side. He's running. He's, you know, his knees are being strengthened. He's leaping for joy. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then it's cutting to the scenes of this woman in labor. Mm-hmm. And she's crying out in pain. She's just a young woman, you know. She's crying out. And it's the woman from earlier, right? The one who drank mm-hmm. from the jug. And we actually have uh, the voiceover narration, mm-hmm. uh, which I believe it's still the voice of that man from the synagogue. Yes. Uh, he is reading this passage. He says, Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive... And bear a son, and shall call his name. And this is right whenever the music just cuts out. Mm-hmm. Right? It just got silent. It says, and call his name. And it says, Emmanuel. Mm-hmm. And then you just hear a baby crying out. Right? You just hear, yeah. And like, I remember, like, I just got chills. I was like, whoa, oh, whoa, whoa. that was good. That was good. Yeah. Uh, because it's like, you don't need the music to enhance yes, it. Yes. All you need is the hearing of that baby's crying. Mm-hmm. Because you think, you're like, wow, God mm-hmm. in the flesh. It's like right there. Mm-hmm. It's like, this is amazing. Yeah. Uh, and so I, I love the creative choice where it's just like, boom. Mm-hmm. Like it just cuts off. Because well, Emmanuel, you know, it means God with us. Right. Right? So it's like literally God is with us right mm-hmm. there. Boom. The baby is crying. So Simon stands and he just stares uh, as the other shepherds, they finally catch up with him. Right? So he was limping before. He was always behind. He's the first to arrive. Right. But then the other shepherds, like, you know, Simon stops and the other shepherds just barrel right past him. And mm-hmm. Simon's like, whoa. Mm -hmm. Uh, And you get this scene of just like, yeah, this little baby just like being held in his mother's arms. And you're like, oh. Mm -hmm. And then the shepherds, they're seen telling Joseph what they saw, right? So Joseph, he's actually kind of freaked out at first. He's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Like, (laughs) they just like run in there. He's like, hey guys, back off. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, And they're like, no, no, no. This angel, and you don't actually hear them like saying it. Mm -hmm. There's music playing over it, you know, very dramatic music. And they're just like, you see them saying like, angel showed up. Yeah. yeah." And like, they're saying, these angels told us to be here. And then Joseph, like, just like him and Mary are exchanging looks. They're like oh my gosh, like, yeah. wow, this escalated really quickly. Like, uh-huh. God wasn't kidding around. Like, people are coming. <laughs> yes. uh, and so they lay their eyes on the baby and Joseph motions them forward and they fall on their knees before him and they begin worshiping just like you read in the passage in Luke, right? Mm-hmm. So once again, it all ties in exactly with what we read in scripture. Yes. Uh, and then Simon, uh, he's the one who actually gets to hold Jesus, yes. right? So he comes forward and I love it because now the other shepherds, um, they turn to mm-hmm. Simon, and they're the ones who motion him forward and say, like, go grab Jesus. You know, I, I thought it was kind of cool. Like, their relationship kind of changed. Yes. Because prior, they were always making fun of him. Mm-hmm. But now, their focus is not even on, like, his disabilities or anything. Like, it's fo- their focus is on the baby. Yes. And they're like, dude, like, all power to you. Go, mm-hmm. like, hold that baby. Like, this is awesome. Yeah. Uh, and so Simon, you know, he gets to hold the baby. Mm-hmm. And the shepherds, they leave, and they're saying, we must tell everyone. We must tell everyone. And, and, like, even as they're walking out, I love, like, just little details. They're saying, thank you, thank you, thank you. Like, they're thanking Mary and Joseph Mm -hmm. for allowing them to just see this baby. Yes. And if you're not a Christian, Mm -hmm. that's a weird thing, right? You don't just walk up to somebody and be like, thank you for allowing me to see your baby. Especially if you're a total stranger, right? Mm -hmm. I'm not going to just go to a hospital, walk up to a woman and be like, thank you for allowing me to see your baby. Yeah. Uh, But it's because (laughs) this baby, yeah. uh, But this baby is significant. And they realize that. And they're like, thank you so much. Yes. For allowing us to see your child. And they're just, they, they leave, right? And Simon is still there. He mm-hmm. lingers for a second. Uh, and I love what he says. You know, he just says, like, we've waited for so long. Mm-hmm. So long. 
Uh, and you just, the, the acting is brilliant because yes. you genuinely, you feel that. Uh, as Christians and stuff, you know, for us, we're looking back on this and we're like, we're 2,000 years removed from this. We don't exactly know that same longing. Right now, what we're doing is we're longing for Jesus to return. Uh, but at the time, they didn't know what this Messiah was going to be like, right? They had all these prophecies. They were trying to figure it out. And for 400 years, it seemed God had just been totally silent. And they had this prophecy that there was someone coming. And they're just waiting. And they're waiting. And they're waiting for deliverance of some kind. They don't know exactly how that deliverance is going to come and how it's going to take shape. But they know it's coming. And they know that when it is, God is going to establish a kingdom on earth. And then finally, that king is here. And they're the first ones who get to meet the king. Uh, and so the, he's just saying, we've waited so long. And, and like how it's acted, you're like, yeah. Yeah, like you're like, oh, this is great. Like yeah. I, I love just how the way that the episode is directed, it helps us understand that longing. Even if you're not familiar with the Old Testament, right. it helps you understand, oh, so there is a lot of buildup here. Yes. Like it wasn't just a totally random thing. Like whenever you get to the New Testament, if you haven't read the Old Testament, you get to the New Testament and you have all these like, you know, proclamations, like a virgin will give birth and stuff. You're probably like, this is really random. Like, mm -hmm. what's up with this? Like, why is all this stuff going on? Like, why is... Like, who is this Jesus guy and why is he important? Mm -hmm. Well, if you read the Old Testament, you realize why. Like, you're like, oh, okay, I, I get now. it. Yeah. Like, the whole Old Testament is building up to this moment. And then the Old Testament just ends without that moment being fulfilled. Mm -hmm. And you're like, what the heck? Mm -hmm. Biggest cliffhanger ever. Like, this is like literally... Like, you know, whenever you're watching a TV show and the season ends on a cliffhanger... Uh -huh. And you're like, dang, I can't wait until next year. Yeah, you have to wait an entire like, yeah, year. Yeah, you have to wait like six months or something until like the next season starts. Yeah. Well, this is a 400-year gap, yeah. right? Like generations and generations and generations have passed, and they're all just longing for this day. Mm -hmm. And then finally it arrives. You're like, oh, wow. Like, so now when you read the New Testament, you read it in a whole new light because you realize people have been waiting and they've been longing for this day. Mm -hmm. And so whenever the angels show up to these shepherds, they're like, what? Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, whenever like the angel shows up to Mary, when an angel shows up to Joseph, all these things, these mm -hmm. have a lot of weight. Whereas if you don't know the Old Testament and you just start with the New Testament, you're probably like, I don't get it. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, obviously it's crazy that an angel showed up, but mm -hmm. like, why is this baby significant? Right. Uh, whereas the Old Testament, like literally it's building up like from Genesis, like literally first book of the Bible all the way through Malachi. It's talking about this Messiah that's coming. And you're mm -hmm. like, oh my gosh, I want to know who this is. And then it just ends. And you're like, what the heck? <laughs> yeah. Come on, God. That's the ultimate cliffhanger. Yeah. <laughs> so 400 years. He says, we've been waiting for so long. Mm -hmm. uh, and then Mary notices um, the guy's ripped up, uh, like his messed up arm. And so she most to Joseph. She's like, oh, look at his arm. And so they actually rip off part of the swaddling clothes mm -hmm. and they wrap it around him. I was like, oh, that's so sweet. Like, Special, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he gets to have little, uh, you know, his um, <laughs> swaddling clothes around his arm. Yeah. Uh, and then he asks them, he says, what are you going to name him? Mm -hmm. Right, because up until this point, they haven't said the name Jesus. Right, they've right. said Emmanuel, they've said Messiah, mm -hmm. but she says, you know, she looks and says Jesus, mm -hmm. and he's like, oh, like you know, he's just excited, and yes. we're excited with him. We're like, oh, Merry Christmas, everybody! Yeah, <laughs> we're just like, oh, this is so good. And then he says, people must know, mm -hmm. people must know. And then he gets up and he goes, and they go to tell everybody. And then like we cut to a scene where basically. All the shepherds, right? They're running through and they're telling, like, they're telling Jews, they're telling Romans, they're yeah, grabbing, like... anyone they can find. Yeah, and, like, He's as like, a hey. Jew, yeah, as a Jew, you don't walk up to a Roman and be, like, grabbing him, be like, oh, oh, yeah, I gotta no. tell you something. But these guys, they don't care. They're like, the Messiah has shown up, and honestly, they're probably walking up with the Romans saying, you stand no chance. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's what they're thinking. Um, but they're thinking, like, the Messiah, Messiah is here. And they're so excited, they're telling everybody. Mm -hmm. And, as a side note, application, this is how we should respond to the gospel. Right, yes. These people, they hear that the Savior of the world has arrived. Mm -hmm. They don't even know exactly what that means yet. But they go and they say, we have to tell everybody. Right. That should be how we respond to the gospel. right? Because mm -hmm. we actually see how that's taking place. Jesus, he actually did way more than they wanted. They wanted him to overthrow the Romans. He says, no, I'm going to actually, like, you know, I'm going to put off that physical deliverance for a little while. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to deal with your sin. Because it doesn't matter. Like, if he established a physical kingdom on earth back then, well, guess what? Everybody's still dead in their sins, and he would be the only one populating it. Right. Instead, he says, I'm going to die for your sins and give you a chance to be forgiven and have a right stance before God once again so that you can join me in that kingdom. That's awesome. Yes. And whenever you hear that, we should have the same response as Simon. We should say, people must know. Yes. People must know. And so whenever we're celebrating Christmas, yeah, we're wearing these Santa hats. I thought that was fun. <laughs> uh, we're wearing these Santa hats, but we got to realize the, per, the reason we're celebrating this, I don't care if Jesus was born on December 25th or not. Yep. The reason we're celebrating it is because people must know. Mm -hmm. God came in the flesh. He was born as a little baby. Uh, and that baby was born to die for us. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. He lived to die. 
Right. Uh, and he lived the perfect life. Like the, the people need to know this stuff. Mm-hmm. He did what we couldn't do. He became sin who knew no sin so that in him we could become the righteousness of God. This is crazy stuff. Groundbreaking stuff. Mm-hmm. I'm telling you, it's like hot Exciting. off the press. Yeah. Right? This news has been around for 2,000 years, yet I get more and more excited about it each and every day. Yes. We need to tell people this. It's amazing. And so he leaves. Uh, he says people need to know this stuff. And then we have one more passage that is read as the uh, little episode draws to a close. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's a very famous passage that we actually do get quoted from the Old Testament very often, even in our church services. Mm -hmm. Uh, And it is this passage in Isaiah chapter 9. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and of peace there will be no end. On the throne of David and over his kingdom, to establish it, and to uphold it with justice and with righteousness. From this time forth and forevermore, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. We have that being read as Simon and the other shepherds are going around telling everybody. Right. And then the final shot of the whole show is whenever that rabbi from mm-hmm. the beginning turns to Simon. And he says, I thought I told you not to come around here. Mm-hmm. So have you found it? Mm-hmm. Did you find your spotless lamb? Mm-hmm. And then it just cuts to Simon, and he looks for a second, and then he smiles. Mm-hmm. And then it cuts to black. Yes. And even when I just said that, I got some chills. Because uh-huh. I'm like, ooh, that's so good. That was one of my uh, favorite scenes. Yeah. I know, like, initially when the rabbi first said that, I just, like, looked at David, and I was like, yes, he has. Yeah. Like, no, she, li- she literally said yes. <laughs> like, like, she was just like, yes, <laughs> he found a spotless lamb. I mean, just to be totally upfront, in the context of the episode, mm-hmm. it is kind of random. Because I don't know if that guy at that moment is looking at the baby and he's thinking, it's the spotless lamb. That baby's going to die. Yes. But as Christian, you know, that's one of those things where there's there's creative liberties where as Christians, there's a message being preached here. Right? Mm -hmm. And we know that he has found the spotless lamb. Mm -hmm. And so you also have the story being brought to, you know, like, you're like, oh, so that spotless lamb thing wasn't just to show that he was having a bad day. It was showing that he could not provide what he needed. Mm Mm-hmm. And Jesus is what he needed. You're like, oh, I got God. it. Ah, okay, good job, Dallas Jenkins. Nice job. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, yeah, really cool. And then, you know, mm-hmm. it cuts to the credits and Oh Holy Night is playing in the background. Mm-hmm. Very sweet little version of it. Yes. Uh, and so there is, you know, the pilot episode of The Chosen. This went mm-hmm. viral. And if it hadn't gone viral, we would not have the show that is currently being created. And mm-hmm. I'm very grateful that we have that. Yes. Uh, but, yeah, so what did you think about the show? Yeah, I really, I liked it a lot. And as we sit here and dissect it and we talk about it more and more, I like it more and more. Mm-hmm. There's just, there's a lot in there. Mm-hmm. For such a short amount of time, like, a lot was fit in there. A lot of details and even things that are not necessarily straight out of scripture, just, like, character development and stuff mm-hmm. like that. Like, they were even able to pull that in mm-hmm. along with making it accurate with, like, theology. So. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of, for, for only being 19 minutes long, yeah. they fit a lot of stuff in there. And yeah. as a person who loves scripture and mm-hmm. who loves to just see how much scripture I can fit into anything... Mm-hmm. I'm very impressed. Yes. I thought it was done really well, and it doesn't contradict scripture at all. It takes some creative liberties, which mm-hmm. I'm fine with. That That's mm-hmm. cool. Uh, it's a fictional story. Simon, we don't know of a shepherd named Simon or anything, mm-hmm. but I liked it. Uh, I thought it was really good, and mm-hmm. I really thought it would just be a good idea for us to get together, do this, to celebrate Christmas, mm-hmm. because that's what the season's all about, right? Like I said, I don't know when Jesus was born. I've got my guesses. Everybody's got their guesses. Mm-hmm. You know, it could be December 25th. Probably not. I don't care. The reason, the thing we need to know is that, you know, Jesus was born, right? Uh, There was this child born, and he is all those things the Bible says about him, and he's so much more, right? Uh, He came into the world to die for us, and that's amazing. And whenever we're celebrating Christmas, we need to realize that's the whole point, right? God, the God who created the universe, Mm -hmm. the one who spoke, let there be light. Mm -hmm. He came in the flesh, and he humbled himself, taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men. Right? He, he came down and he was born as a little baby, right? This is the infinite God who created all things. Born as a tiny little baby. That's crazy. I don't even know how that works. 33 years later, he'd be hanging from a cross, dying for the sins of the world. Yes. And I think we, our takeaway needs to be exactly as Simon's was. We need to say, people need to know. Mm-hmm. You know, we must tell everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> uh, like, the shepherd's reactions here should be our reactions to the gospel. Mm-hmm. Right? We should see what Jesus did. These people were reacting just to seeing God come in the flesh. They didn't even know he was God. They just knew he was the deliverer, 
right? They had no way of knowing that the Messiah was going to be God um, because by and large, it didn't seem like people thought that God could come in the flesh. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't blame them, right? I wouldn't have thought that either. (laughs) But once Jesus shows up, he's like, I'm God. You're like, okay. But they just recognized that he was the deliverer and they were already grateful, right? How much more grateful should we be having realized exactly what he came to do, right? He wasn't just coming to take over the Romans. He was coming to deliver us from sin. That's awesome. He's giving us a chance to be restored in a relationship with our creator, who is also him. Mm-hmm. Crazy stuff. Yes. So that is the reason for the season, my friends. Yes. The Santa stuff, that's all fun. But mm-hmm. Jesus is the reason. But yeah, guys, so I just wanted to share that. I thought it'd be fun. Thank you for watching this with me and allowing me to ramble on and on and on about it. Mm-hmm. Uh, we'll be back with you very soon with Chosen Episode 2. You've actually seen a few more episodes than that. because uh, <laughs> Yes. Yeah, I actually showed her... Some like we we started watching the show uh, just so we could do the analysis of episode two. Yeah. Uh, and then I think she kind of got hooked, and so she started yeah, watching really a little good. bit more. I would like text her and be like, "What show do?" She's like, "Watching more of the chosen." I'm like, <laughs> yeah, there you go. Uh, and so we'll be back with episode two uh, sometime soon. Uh, I don't know when, but we already got it filmed. I just need to edit the video, and I'll get it out to you at some point. Mm-hmm. Uh, but until then, Merry Christmas, everybody. Yes. Hope you have a great Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Remember uh, what this is all about. And if you haven't watched The Chosen, the pilot episode, go do it. Yes. Uh, sorry, I just spoiled all of it for you, but, you know, you accepted that when you clicked this <laughs> video. So uh, go watch the episode. Go share it with people. It's a great reminder of what this is all about. And uh, I think that's all I got to say. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm David. And I'm Brian. And this is Now Let's Be Honest About Movies. We will see you later. Merry Christmas. <laughs>